They're picturing China as the great threat to the world. In the West, and especially in the United States, for them, everything is win-lose. I think one thing that's kind of sad is that the Western misconceptions about China today are pretty similar to those of when I came in 88. There hasn't been a lot of change, um, but they're similar to what they were 100 years ago. That's why and when Xi Jinping was governor 20 years ago in Fujian, he said that Chinese have come to know the world better, but the world still doesn't know China. For example, I was in Taiwan. I was in the military in Taiwan for two years. I really thought that China was the big threat to the world. But that's because of fake news is nothing new. In 1899, just before the 20th, 20th century began, in that year, Lord Beresford in England wrote a book called The Breakup of China. It was a catalog of all the Chinese provinces and cities and all the resources the West could get from it. I mean, they're really talking about taking China to pieces, and I get this, you get this. And in the same year, two other books they published was China, The Yellow Peril, and China at War with the World. They're picturing China as the great threat to the world, which is ironic because they were tearing China to pieces, forcing opium on China. Chinese have never gone to a distant country to take over, and yet they were saying China was the threat. It was pretty ironic, but China was a threat to the West because they thought China was finally going to stand up and stop the easy money. That was the fake news then, and today is the same thing. They, you know, they, they still are parade, it's just like in the 70s when I was in Taiwan, the 80s when I first came, and today they're saying China is a threat to the world. China's destroying the world order. Well, what's a world order built on? I mean, it wasn't necessarily a good order anyway. <laughs> and uh, so the media is very powerful. Or when the Second Opium War, the media was used even back then. The British leaders, the parliament, the entire British parliament unanimously opposed the Second Opium War. So the prime minister just dissolved parliament and the media said, we're going to war against China because of the honor of the queen. They did something bad and people believed it. And today people believe it. It's not much changed in really 180 years. So that's why I think it's so important that we really work, not just government promotion, but that a lot of people get involved in telling China's story to help foreigners see what is the truth here. That's why I started writing about China. I thought if I write about China, if I write my family and friends, as soon as I got to China, I saw China is not at all like what the media portrayed it. So I immediately started writing letters and articles and things to show China, but I thought if I really start writing about China, they'll see that as propaganda. So I wrote about Chinese and how Chinese lived and what their dreams were and how their lives were changing. And through that, try to change people's opinion. Because if you understand Chinese, then you understand China. And my father was the hardest sell. And he was in the military 18 years, in Asia 11 years fighting communist China. <laughs> so he wasn't real happy I came here. But the year he died, a few months before he died, the last time I saw him, he said he finally understood why I came here and stayed here, and he's proud that I did it. And that was about if my father's can change. So I think the most important thing China will do, besides telling more materials about China, is just its actions in the world. I mean, the world really fears China. But I understand why they fear China, because, I mean, look at history. 500 and something years, how have the Western countries I tell my students that the Chinese are the best business people in history because throughout history, Chinese have done real business. They've never had Beijing military navy behind them. Chinese in China and Southeast Asia, they just did real business, whereas for 500 years, Western businessmen have always had the military and the governments behind them. So that's how the West has done things for over 500 years. And I don't think they can really understand that Chinese throughout history have not done colonialism, these kind of things, and they've just done real business pure business, peaceful business. But they can't believe a country this big can be so different. Um, so I think China's actions, peaceful coexistence, peaceful development, peaceful helping other countries, I think that's the greatest China story. And in the West, and especially in the United States, for them, everything is win-lose, you know, win-lose. And the U.S. has to be number one at everything. And then Germany, France, and England, the former colonial powers have to be right behind them, and Japan. And they see China as catching up as a threat to them being number one. Why does everybody have to be number one? Why can't they just coexist? 
but they can't see that, they can't accept that. But the fact is, the numbers don't lie. 25 years ago, I wrote about this in articles, you know, I said, the economy is returning, the global economy is, the center is returning to Asia. And not moving to Asia, returning to Asia. And foreigners will slowly see this because they have to see it and they have to accept it, but they need to learn a little history too. Harvard Business Review in 2014 said that uh, 300 years ago, China and India had two-thirds of the world GDP. And, and Harvard Business Review said before the first opium war, the Chinese economy was more open and more market-driven than the economies of Europe. So they talk about this open economy, free trade, but they've never done it. They've always had colonialism and military intervention and regime change. China has never done that, but they fear China will do that. And so they've tried for 180 years to contain China. Now they're getting to the point where they're seeing they can't contain China, and if they continue, they'll only isolate themselves. Like China just signed the, the RCEP trade agreement, which takes, I think, a third of the world or two-thirds of the world, some humongous amount, and U.S. is not part of that. So I think the rest of the world is going to have to see the fact that they can't contain China, they can't stop it, but that doesn't make China a threat. I think China, for the first time in at least 500 years since Columbus Day, I think China can show the world how to peacefully develop. Because in a planet this small, you can't afford to always solve everything with war. So I hope China can teach a peaceful world order.